friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawns Baked with Love. So I'm stamping out my images with Memento Tuxedo Black ink on some Copic Friendly cardstock, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers today. Before I pick out my markers, I just wanted to go ahead and go through my pattern papers. I wanted to color my images to match one of the patterns in this pack. This is the Our House Collection by Cartabella. So I'm just flipping through until I find the page that I wanted to use as inspiration. And then I'm going to tuck that underneath my uh, cardstock with my stamped images so that I can choose my marker colors. The first combination that I'm using is E40, E41, and E43. And I'm going to begin with my flower sack. I wanted it to have kind of a vintage feel to it, so I wanted to color it with these a little bit um, more antiqued colors. So I'm using that E43 to lay in some shadows, especially under the rim where it's kind of folded down and um, at the bottom edges as well, just to give it that kind of rounded appearance. And then I'm going to begin to pull that out with the E41. I don't want things to get too dark, so I'm sticking very close to the edges, you'll notice. And then I'm going to come in with that E40 and begin to pull all of that color towards the center. I'm not going to cover the entire thing. I want the center to look white. So I will grab my colorless blender and just soften up the edge of that E40 until it fades into the white. While I have those markers out, I'm going to also color in my eggs and any additional images that I want to be that pale cream color. I'm trying to match the background shade of the pattern paper, so I'm going to use that on the inside of the bowl and on my salt shaker as well. Then I'm going to come in with BG10 and BG11 and add a little bit of color just to the area where it has the word flower on that sack, just to have a little bit of a pop of color and to pull in some of that blue shade that is in so much of that background pattern paper. So I'm going to color in that and then also the cupcake liner and the wooden spoon because on the background paper there are blue wooden spoons or plastic spoons. I don't know what they are, but they're blue. And then I'm going to come back in with that E41 right on top of that blue shade and add a little of that to add that vintage vibe back into it. Just give things a little bit more of an aged look. Then I'm moving on to my mixing bowl. I'm using YG61, YG63, and YG67. I'm going to come in with that YG67 from both sides, and that is going to help it lift off the page and make it look round. Then I'll come in with the YG63 and pull that color towards the center, keeping a nice highlight down the center where the light would hit. So that's going to be filled in with the YG61. Then I'm going to go back over that entire bowl with a double layer. You can see that there wasn't very much contrast right now. These colors blended so well together. So I just want to beef up that contrast and give a little bit more definition to the outside edges. So I'm going to pull in those darker shades, leaving a wider highlight this time. And I'm not going to cover up the entire thing with the YG61. So it's almost as if there were four shades there. There's a lot of pink tones in that background as well, so the next combo I'm using are R11, R20, and R22. So I'm adding some shading in with the R22 on the cupcake frosting, just trying to define those layers, and again, just outline the edges, and then I'm going to pull that color towards the center with the R20 and then I'll use that R11 as my highlight down the center. And then I'm going to remove the R11 and add in the R24 to color in my cake stand, since there is a red cake stand in that background. I'm going to accentuate the little scallops with that R24, and then pull in some color from underneath where the top would be casting a shadow on the base and a little shading on each side, and then a little shading on each side of the top as well. 
Then I'm going to take the R22 and pull that color towards the center. Now I could tell as I was coloring that my R22 was running a little dry, so it was a little bit heavier than I would have liked. So I'm just sticking close to the outside edges and I'm going to use that R20 to really pull those colors together and help them blend. And then of course, after I'm done filming, I will refill that R22 so that it's flowing more nicely and more true to color when I use it next. For the butter, I'm using Y13, Y15, and Y17. And it's a little bit more of a golden shade rather than a pale yellow, but that is because I'm trying to pull in that golden shade from the teapot in the background pattern paper. And then once I have that completely colored in, I'm going to go back to that E41 and E43 and just add a little bit of shading onto that again, just to knock that yellow back a tiny bit and get it to uh, have that vintage feel like the other pieces. I did this on all of my images with the exception of the cake platter and the cupcake frosting. Finally, I'm going to use the W00 to add a little bit of shading to the white of the flower that's spilling out of the sack. And then I'll use the W3 and W1 to add a little bit of color to the top of the salt shaker and the stripe on the mixing bowl. And I did add a little W1 to the flower as well. And now I'll trim these out with the matching dies. Now that I have my images colored, I'm going to go through my pattern paper pad and choose two additional patterns that are going to match with the piece that I've chosen as my background. So I've got this pink polka dot that uh, kind of resembles little cherries or something like that that I thought would be cute with the cupcake theme. And now I'm looking for something that'll add a little bit of boldness. And I thought this black and white scallop would do the trick. So I'm going to pull those three out and trim those down to size. Next I need to add a sentiment. So I'm going back to my Baked with Love stamp set and stamping out the sentiment with that theme. And I'm just using black ink on white cardstock so it'll uh, mimic the black and white scallop pattern paper that I'll be using. And then while I have my Misty out, I'm also going to stamp on the inside of my card. I'm using Lawn Fawn's Bubblegum Ink to stamp Have a Sweet Birthday and then several other images that were included in that same stamp set. So this is just a one stamp set card today. So I stamped that down a couple of times to get a really good impression. And then I added a couple of additional images just to fill in the scene a little bit on the left and right sides. So it kind of flows down all the way from the top to bottom, just kind of shifting over from one side to the other. I've trimmed down that pink and red polka dot pattern paper with the Lawn Fawn cross-stitched square stackables. And that's going to be my focal panel. So I'm just trying to arrange my images on there. I know that I wanted the cake stand to be in the middle and that's going to have the cupcake on top sort of as the centerpiece since this is a birthday card. And then I wanted to arrange all the rest of my images around it. So I'm just laying things out and seeing how I want them to fit on the card before I go ahead and glue them down permanently. Now I did want to say that this card is for our current Lawn Fanatics Challenge, which was to make a card that is inspired by your favorite movie, book, or song. So I chose my favorite book, which is called The School of Essential Ingredients by Erica Bauermeister. And it's about a woman who is teaching cooking classes and also about some of the students that are taking her cooking class. So um, it's a beautiful book. I absolutely love it. The writing is gorgeous and the characters are so compelling. And there's also a sequel called The Lost Art of Mixing, which is wonderful as well. But I thought this Baked with Love stamp set was going to be the perfect jumping off point from that inspiration. So I'm just going to continue to glue down my images as I had arranged them using some Tombow Mono liquid glue. 
and that just gives me a little bit of wiggle room so that I make sure I have them exactly where I want them before they're pressed permanently into place. And then I'll tap off the seam by adding the cupcake right to the center of the cake stand. And then I can just set this panel aside so the glue can completely dry. And then while that's going on, I'm going to work on assembling my card base. So I've got a piece of pink ballet slippers cardstock, and I'm going to adhere that base print down to cover the entire top of the card. I did trim that down with the Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle Stackables to give it the nice stitching detail along the outside edge. And then I've got this black and white scallop. I'm going to do, add that a little bit high of center. I've added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel. And so I'll peel off those release papers and line that up right over top of the scallop. It is going to cover up much of the scallop, which is going to knock down a little bit of that bold print and make it read a little bit more like a stripe so it's not too in your face. So I think the combination of patterns worked pretty well. As a finishing touch, I'm going to grab some crystal stickles and add a little bit of a sparkly detail to just a few of the accent images. So I'm using it on the flower in the flower sack, the salt in the salt shaker, and also the pink frosting on the top of the cupcake. So that completes our card for today. There's a look at the sparkle and shine and another peek at the inside. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what your favorite book or movie or song is. I would love to know. You can hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And you can also hit that notification bell if you want to be sure that my videos are always in your feed. If you'd like to keep on watching, here's two videos I thought you might also enjoy, so you could click on either one of those. Thank you so much again. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.